driving Hope comes and stops us in our tracks Bravely we prove in our striving Trudging together each day Welcome to the Raw Recovery and Trudging Together podcast. We don't usually do video, but we are on this series. Um, this series will probably use video. Um, oh, no. We'll see how it works out. Um, just so you know, this is to help uh, people with the first 63 pages of the big book. Uh, that includes uh, starting from the co front cover of the book. And uh, we're going to read it. And, you know, I'm doing this because I'm hearing a lot of people with this speedy recovery. And it, it kind of scares me because we might be missing out on something. Um, but I don't like going around saying people are wrong because they're probably not. So I thought what I would do is kind of put something out for the people that would like to dig into the big book a little bit more. Um, I'm going to treat this like I would a sponsee, okay? This means that it's going to take a while. I do not know how many series this will be. Um, I'm guessing probably close to 10. I will try and put one out a week, or I will try and get them out. I'm not sure the process yet, but let's kind of get to things. Let's kind of get to it. Um, a little bit about me. Um, I've been around the program now for about 35 years. I just celebrated eight years last month and, uh, been a drug and alcohol counselor. I've lived on Skid Row. I've, I've done a lot of stuff and I have a lot of experience with this program and I just feel the need to give it away. Um, you know, you can't keep it unless you give it away. So let's give it away. This is how we're going to start. Um, and you might want to pause during this um, because we're going to be doing some writing in your big book. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these up um, kind of in uh, I'm going to I'm going to put them up. Window. No. Um, why is it not doing that here? Let's start with this one right here. OK. Now we come back here, cancel, we're going to share the screen, and it's not there. There it is. Okay. This is going to be the first one, and it's going to go on the left inside cover. I'm not going to be speaking during this. Remember, you can uh, go ahead and pause the video. I will be covering these. Okay. We're going to get rid of that one. The next one will go on the right side of the inside of your big book, where it is blank. This is what we call the set-aside prayer. We will be, and I may forget, I may forget, but each time we do this, we are supposed to read the set-aside prayer. We will do that today. Remember to pause and get this. All right, next one, and this will be the last one for now. This will go on uh, the contents page. So just flip a couple of pages and there's a page before it that says um, AA uh, books that you can read. Go ahead, pause that. And we will get to it when we get to that part in the big book. All right. So let's get to it. Let's do this. This is our big book. This is the fourth edition. Okay. Shouldn't matter what edition you have. Okay. I'm going to let you know there's a part in here. That's not in your, that's in your book. That is not in mine. There's a misprint in my book. Um, so I'll make sure that you get it covered. All right. So what's the first thing that we're going to do? We're going to pray. 
We're going to pray to God. Okay. So we're just going to do this prayer together. It's called the set aside prayer. God, please help me set aside what I think I know about AA, this book, how to do these steps, how to get sober, how to stay sober, how to have a relationship with you, God. And last, so you can change me and teach me new things. Amen. All right, now we're ready to get started. So where are we going to start? Well, we're going to start here. This is where we're going to start. This is usually where your sponsor will say, okay, open this up and you open it up and you open it up and it's blank. And they say, you know, because you open it, you open it to the first page because you think you're following directions. And they're like, no, no, no. No, that that's what I'm talking about. What's on it? Nothing. Yeah, and that's what you know about staying sober. Okay. That's kind of an old way. Here's the thing, though, is if you've had time, you didn't lose everything. If you've done work in this program, you didn't lose everything. You have to work hard to get it back, but you didn't lose everything. So let's go here. We're going to start here. This is their circle and our triangle. The circle represents infinity. What's infinity? Well, forever. Okay. And then inside that is our triangle. And there is meaning to that. And I forgot what it was. So I'll try and get it to you. Okay. So on the left, we have unity. Okay. That is the 12 traditions. And that equals go to meetings. Yep. Go to meetings. That is how you, that's unity, okay? Recovery is do the 12 steps. Get a sponsor, okay? Do not rely on me and do not rely on these videos to get you and keep you sober. This is just something helpful, okay? You're going to need a sponsor. A sponsor is a guide. They are nothing else, Okay? Let's remember this is your recovery, okay? Now, I want you to be open-minded, but what a sponsor does not, I'm going to just let you know what a sponsor does not do, okay? A sponsor does not give advice. I am not, as a sponsor, even if I am a doctor, I'm not a doctor. That's not my job at the moment. My job, and my job isn't to be your friend either. I will be certainly be friendly with you and and I love you and everything. I don't know you well enough to be friends yet. And we're talking about your life. I'm not doing this to get friends. I'm doing this because it keeps me sober. The 12 concepts, which is service work. That equals help AA. Make coffee, start meetings, attend meetings, donate. Take meetings to, to detoxes. Very important that we do this work. Okay. That is what we call our three-legged stool. And we use a three-legged bar stool so that you understand because you're an alcoholic. <laughs> right? Okay. If you take away one of these, you're going to fall on your face. Period. Okay. So where are we going to start? Well, we're going to start with the steps. We're going to start with the steps. Are we, though? Is that really the first part? I don't know. I think going to a meeting is probably the first part. So you're in unity and working the traditions before you're in the steps. You didn't know this, and that's okay. Um, that's kind of what I'm going to cover. I'm covering the whys. Why is all this happening? Because if you, the more you know on this and the more information you have, but I know the better chance you will have. I already know that. So, all right. Let's go below that. This is the definition of a good AA program. Each day, go to meetings. Help AA work the steps. What did we just cover? So we do that every day. Why? Well, they say that it's probably a good idea to go to meetings like you used to drink. I drank every day. Therefore, I go to meetings every day. 
recovered. Yes, we're talking about recovered almost immediately. And the definition of recovered is on pages 85 and 86. If you'd like to go read them, I will not be covering them in this series. But I will tell you that the word recovered is going to be talked about a lot. In fact, from here on, you're going to be underlining every single word or every single time you see the word recovered. I may miss some. So you may, if you see it, you underline that sucker. What is recovered? I'm a recovered alcoholic. That means that I have done the 12 steps and that I am no longer insane. It does not mean I am cured from alcoholism. Absolutely not. It just means that I can use my brain again. It means I've hit the 10th step. And the 10th step allows you to be human. All right? So that's kind of the definition of recovered. Okay, we're going to go, we're going to skip a couple pages. And we're going to go to other books. Other books. Here, I'm going to, hopefully this doesn't change anything. I'm going to get rid of this. Because I need room for my book. And if I push that, it'll push the camera. <laughs> so what we have now is other books. These are AA. This is AA material. I'm going to suggest, and I have my reasons, I'm going to suggest that until you finish the steps, you don't read anything else but what's right here in this list. There's plenty. Trust me. There's plenty. And there's even stuff in here um, that you can still read, like AA Comes of Age, Language of the Heart. Um, listen to uh, Bill and Charlie. But keep your purview in the AA realm. There are plenty of other books out there, okay, like Around the World, right? Uh, Drop the Rock. Um, there, there are several ones that are, that are used in AA. These are not AA-approved literature. These are self-help books. And I'm sorry, but you don't know how to help yourself yet. And that's why we don't need you deviating and going over here when we're trying to keep you on a path. So let's stay in our realm. Okay. We're going to go to the next page. Alcoholics Anonymous, the story of how many thousands of men and women have recovered from alcoholism. Fourth edition. There's our recovered. There's our recovered. All right. Still going. Next page. Um, on the copyright, don't, don't worry about that. Now, you can see all of this that's on, the, you know, hopefully you wrote this down. If not, you're not required to, but you may not understand what I'm talking about. So we're just talking about the contents, this first page. Now, these first, the preface, forwards, that's our AA history. <coughs> Excuse me. That's our AA history. That's how it tells us how AA came about. The doctor's opinion, Bill's story, there is a solution more about alcoholism is the first half of the first step. Yep, there are four chapters about the first half of the first step. It says up to page 23, it's all about the physical. The physical portion, then they start talking about the mental. We agnostics is the second half of the first step and all of the second. How it works is steps three and four. Into actions is five through 11. Working with others is step 12. Okay. Two wives, the family afterward to the employers. I stay sober by working the steps in the real world. <laughs> These are three very important chapters that are hardly even touched. Hardly even touched. You've got to cover them. What I do is I go from working with others to a vision for you so they can get the payoff. And then I go back to wives, the family afterward, and the employer. They seem to catch it better. And then we read Dr. Bob's story, and then I move on to traditions. Okay. Um, a vision for you is the payoff. It's what you get out of it. A whole chapter 
written about what you're going to get out of this. All right. All right. And then at part one, Pioneers, it's more history. All right. We're going to get to some actual reading now. <laughs> we're going to go to the preface. Okay. Preface. And um, it is on page 11 in the Roman numerals. Now, um, I may I may stop because there's a lot of writing in here. Okay, so I may stop and say, hey, we need to underline this or whatever. Remember, we are underlining recovered. All right. Now, I usually make my sponsees read this because I read all the time. But, and my cats don't read. I've been teaching them. It ain't working. <laughs> Preface. All right, let me get some talking juice here real quick. <clears throat> All right. Preface. This is the fourth edition of the book Alcoholics Anonymous. The first edition appeared in April 1939, and in the following six years, more than 300 copies went into circulation. The second published, the second edition published in 1955, reached a total of more than one million. 150, 500 copies. What a jump. What a jump. Huge jump. The third edition, which came off the press in 1976, achieved circulation of approximately 19,550,000 in all formats. A format means a different language. And I have written right after that because it works. That's why, because we're at, well, why? Because this book has become the basic text of, of for our society and helps such large numbers of alcoholic men and women to recover, there exists a strong sentiment against any radical changes being made in it. All right, this conversation has come up lately. Let's cover it. We're, we're going to cover this stuff, you bet. So why? Number one, there's nothing wrong with the verbiage. There's nothing wrong with it. It's written in plain English. Okay. So the miracle of the book, you, if you if you go through the history, Bill didn't write the book. 100 people did. It just said that right there. Okay. So the question really is, who's going to do it? Who's going to rewrite it? Because God wrote it last time. God gave it to us. It was a gift from God. And now you want to change it. And I'm not trying to be rude or mean, okay? But there are a lot of words in here when I first started that I didn't understand. So get yourself a big book dictionary. I'll be using this. A lot of these words I already know. So I'm going to tell you what they mean, okay? But we need to understand what these words mean. Or you're not going to know the difference between humility and, and humiliation, right? Therefore, the first portion of this volume describing the AA recovery program has been left largely untouched in the course of revisions made for the second, third, and fourth edition. The section called The Doctor's Opinion has been kept intact just as it was originally written in 1939 uh, by the late Dr. William D. Silkworth. Our society is great medical benefactor. I'm actually going to switch books because that is right where my book is wrong, is misprinted. So I'm actually going to, I'm going to go here. So that way we're on the same page. All right. Oh, that's a second. Preface. The second printing of the first edition added the appendix spiritual experience. In the second edition, the appendices on AA tradition, the medical view, and religious views of AA, the Lasker Award, and information on how to contact AA were added, and the appendix on the Alcoholic Foundation was discontinued. But the chief change was in the section of personal stories, which was expanded to reflect the fellowship's growth, Bill's story, Dr. Bob's nightmare, and one other personal history from the first edition were retained intact. Three were edited and one was retitled. New versions of two stories were written and new with new titles. 30 completely new stories were added 
and the story section was divided into three parts under the same heading that are used now. So there's also our answers to why, okay? Because what AA does is it meets people where they're at. It doesn't matter what era we're in. We meet people where they're at. And that is done through storytelling. So it's the stories in the back of the book that change to meet the needs. Okay? So you got what you wanted. Okay? Even with the new one. Um, let me know if you guys can hear that. Nobody's here, Dion. Oh, I'm so used to it live. All right. In the third edition, part one, Pioneers of AA was left unchanged. Nine of the stories in part two, they stopped in time, were carried over from the second edition. Eight new stories were added in part three. They nearly lost all. Eight stories were retained. Five new ones were added. This fourth edition includes the 12 concepts for world service and revises the three sections of personal stories as follows. We're almost done with this part. Now we can get to the fun stuff, okay? Uh, this part's kind of arduous, I know. Okay, it, it could be hard. I'm, I'm bored with it. <laughs> okay, maybe you're not though. Who knows? Some people see things differently. So, um, our new story has been added. Uh, the uh, da, da, da. have originally appeared in part three, have been repositioned there. Six stories have been deleted, six of the stories of part two have been carried over, and 11 new ones have been added, and 11 taken out. Part three now includes 12 new eight stories. Eight were removed in addition to that were transferred to part one. Whew. All right. All changes made over the years in the big book, AA's uh, member's fond name for this book, have had the same purpose, to represent the current member of Alcoholics Anonymous more accurately and thereby to reach more alcoholics. See, we do do it. So when people come along and say, hey, you're doing it wrong, AA, I say, you didn't read the first part of the book, did you? Because our answers are right there. If you have a drinking problem, we hope that you may pause in reading one of the 42 personal stories and, and think, yes, that happened to me. Or more important, yes, I have felt like that. Or most important, yes. I believe this program can work for me too. Right after that, I have written how do the first how how do the first half of the how to do the first half of the first step. Do you drink like that? Do I feel like that? Do I think like that? Are these things that I think of? You don't have to write that one down. But we are going to be marking next. All right, so now we're going to get to the forward to the first edition, okay? It's the forward to the second edition. That's kind of long. All right. Forward to the first edition. This is the forward to, uh, this is the forward as it appeared in the first printing of alcohol, printing of the first edition in 1939. We, we, see the big books kind of started now. We, of Alcoholics Anonymous, are more than 100 men and women who have recovered, <gasps> recovered, underline it, from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and body to show other alcoholics precisely how we have recovered is the main purpose of this book. Underline that whole sentence. For them, we hope that these pages will prove so convincing that no further authentication will be necessary. We think this account of our experience will help everyone better to understand the alcoholic. Many do not, many do not comprehend that the alcoholic is a very sick person. And besides, we are sure that our way of living has its advantages for all. Underline our way of living. Okay? Because we do, okay, just like you affected other people in a bad way, you can affect them in a good way now. And they don't need to be alcoholic. Okay? It is important that we remain anonymous. 
because we are too few at the present handle to handle the overwhelming number of personal appeals, which may result from this publication. Being mostly business or professional folk, we could not well carry our occupation in such an event. We would like it understood that our alcoholic work is an avocation. Now, that was in 1939. It is important we remain anonymous because we're too few. That's not true anymore. What I want you to do is I want you to take an arrow, put it up to here and write no longer true. That is no, that is no longer true. That was 1939. That's where anonymous came from. That's why we were anonymous. Okay. Um, anonymity. Let's just cover anonymity real quick. You cannot blow other people's anonymity. You can't go around saying Dion's an AA member. You can't go around telling my story. You got to stick to your experience. If you are speaking as an AA member, omit your name or stick to your first name. Or use your full name and do not speak as an AA member and you're covered. That's it. We like to take this and, and create into other things. And it is not that. Okay. That's why we were anonymous. I'm sorry. I should have... Uh... There we go. It's actually good news. <laughs> when writing or speaking publicly about alcoholism, we urge each fellowship to omit his personal name and in, uh, designate himself instead as a member of Alcoholics Anonymous. Very earnestly, we also ask the press to observe this request, for otherwise we shall be uh, greatly handicapped. I want you to notice something. The press will fuck with everybody else, but they will not fuck with us. Okay, they will lose their license messing with us. You just don't, don't, and don't try it either. Okay, if you go to a news reporter, they are taught to keep our anonymity. Okay, very serious. We are not an organization in the conventional sense of the word. There are no dues or fees whatsoever. The only requirement for membership is an honest desire to stop drinking. We are not allied with any particular faith, sector, denomination, nor do we oppose anyone. We simply wish to be helpful to those who are afflicted. I want you to notice something. Did you catch it? That honest desire to stop drinking? It's not there anymore, is it? Good reason for that. Very good reason for it. It is because we could not make the requirement. When a new met person comes in, I'm going to tell you something. They're full of shit. Let them be. They're being as honest as they can be. And you've got to give it to them. you got to give it to them. Because they don't know how to be honest with you yet. Just like I needed to be taught. We shall be interested to hear from those who are getting results from this book. Particularly from those who have commenced to work with other alcoholics. We should be like to be helpful in such cases in such cases inquired by scientific medical and religious societies will be welcome alcoholics anonymous all right we are now this is actually taking shorter than i thought see i usually have another person talking back we would have hit an hour by now <laughs> so uh and we're at half hour, so I'm going to go ahead and keep on going. I think I'm going to try and get through forward to the second edition. It's kind of long, so. And it'll mostly just be reading. Figures given in this forward describe the fellowship as it was in 1955, so 16 years later. Since the original forward to this book was written in 1939, a wholesale miracle has taken place. Our earliest printing voiced the hope that every alcoholic who journeys will find the Fellowship of Alcoholics Anonymous at his destination. Already continues the early text, twos and threes and fives of us have sprung up in other communities. Sixteen years have elapsed between our first printing of this book and the presentation in 1955. Our second edition, uh, our, of our second edition, in that brief space, Alcoholics Anonymous has mushroomed 
into nearly 6,000 groups whose membership is far above 150,000 recovered alcoholics. There's that recovered word. Groups are to be found in each of the United States and all the provinces of Canada as flourishing communities in the British Isles, Scandinavian, South Africa, South America, Mexico, Alaska, Australia, and Hawaii. I'm the kind of pushing it here, Alaska and Hawaii. Oh, you know what? Not 1955, they weren't. Okay. All told, promising beginnings have been made in some 50 foreign countries and U.S. possessions. Some are just now taking shape in Asia. Many of our friends encourage many of our friends encourage us by saying this is only beginning, only the augury of a much larger future ahead. So I heard somebody I had somebody I heard somebody I saw somebody say in chat, do they have AA in Korea? And somebody said, No. Yes, they do. Yeah, they do. A's everywhere. Okay, but what are they? They're secret societies, but they're there. See, in a lot of countries, you and this is the way AA started. You couldn't just walk into an AA meeting back then. No, you had to be sponsored. That means you had to be brought in by somebody that was trusted that wasn't going to mess with the group. So, yes, they do have meetings in Korea. You just don't know about them. Notice when you go to Zoom, there are a lot of countries that aren't there. Right? But they do have AA. It's only the democracy really, right? You don't see any Russians in there, but you know that you don't, don't see many people from Germany. But a lot of people from the UK, right? Canada and the United States and Mexico. Not, not even really Mexico. The spark that was the flare into the first AA group was struck in Akron, Ohio in June 1935 during a talk between a New York stockbroker and an Akron physician. Six months earlier, the broker had been relieved of his drink obsession by a sudden spiritual experience. Following a meeting with an alcoholic friend who had been in contact with the Oxford group of that day. He had also been greatly helped by the late Dr. William D. Silkworth, a New York specialist in alcoholism who is now accounted no less than a medical saint by our AA members and whose story of the early days of our society appears in the next pages. From this doctor, the broker had learned the grave nature of his alcoholism. Though he could not accept all the tenets of the Oxford group, he was convinced to, uh, of the need for a moral inventory. Confession of personal defects, restitution to those harmed, helpfulness to others, and the necessity of belief in and dependence upon God. Oxford group. That's AA came from the Oxford group. We stole our stuff, man. Okay. There has not been an original thought with this stuff in, in hundreds of years. This is not new information. It's just now it's been written in, in a way that I can understand it. The Oxford groups are still around. They're mostly in, in the form of sober livings, and they're a great program. They work very, very well. Um, prior to his journey to Akron, the broker had, had worked hard with many alcoholics on the theory that only an alcoholic could help another alcoholic. But he had succeeded only in keeping himself sober. Yeah, which may, did you know that I am 100% successful as a sponsor? I'm still sober. My sobriety is not dependent upon other people's sobriety. I help others and give it away because I want to stay sober. I want to continue getting the gifts that I get. The broker had gone to Akron on a business venture which had collapsed leaving him greatly in fear that he might start drinking again. He suddenly realized that in order to save himself, he must carry the, his message to another alcoholic. That alcoholic turned out to be the Akron physician. And we'll be covering that story. We'll be covering that story a little bit later in the book. The physician had repeatedly tried spiritual means to resolve his alcoholic dilemma, but had failed. But when the broker gave him Dr. Silkworth's description of alcoholism and its hopelessness, 
the physician began to pursue the spiritual remedy for his malady with a willingness he had never been able before been able to muster. He sobered never to drink uh, again up to the moment of his death in 1950. This seemed to prove that one alcoholic could affect an another as no non-alcoholic could. It is also indicated the strenuous work one alcoholic with another was vital to permanent recovery. In other words, you can't keep it unless you give it away. It's, it's one of the paradoxes of the program. But it works. It's true. Hence, the two men set to work almost frantically upon alcoholics arriving in the ward in Akron City Hospital. Their very first case at desperate one recovered immediately and became AA number three. He never had another drink. This work at Akron continued through the summer of 1935. There are many failures, but there was an occasional heartening success. When the broker returned to New York in, full, uh, in the fall of 1935, the, AA, the first AA group had actually been formed, though no one realized it at the time. Look at all these happy coincidences that happen. Like the beginning of a group. What do we have now? Like the beginning of sponsorship. Now we have it. Now it's a staple where we thought something was something to get us somewhere actually turned out to be, you know, something that we could actually work with. Uh, a small, uh, second small group promptly took shape at New York to be followed in 1937 with the start of the th of a third at Cleveland. Besides these, there were scattered alcoholics who had picked up the basic idea in Akron or New York who were trying to form groups in other cities. By late 1937, the number of members having substantial sobriety behind them was sufficient to convince the membership that a new light had entered the dark world of the alcoholic. Now, it was now time, the struggling groups thought, to place their message and unique me uh, experience before the world. The determination bore fruit in the spring of 1939 by the publication of this volume. The membership had then reached about 100 men and women. The fledging society, which had been nameless, now began to be called Alcoholics Anonymous from the title of its own book. The flying blind period ended and AA entered a new phase of its pioneering time. So this is where I inform you that Bill did not write the big book. 100 men and women did. A lot of red ink. Now, Bill wrote the basics, but we've already covered one thing, the honest desire. They, they removed it. They removed it. Okay. So Bill laid down a foundation, but then these 100 men and women went through it, said, red mark, red mark, red mark, and red marked them. And then 100 people went through it, wrote this book. And that is the miracle of the book, that 100 people could agree on something. 100 alcoholics could agree on something. That's a freaking miracle. <laughs> with the appearance of the new new book a great deal began to happen dr harrison emerson fosdick the noted clergyman reviewed it with approval in the fall of 1939 fulton ausler then editor of the liberty printed a piece in his magazine called alcoholics and god this brought a rush of 800 frantic inquiries into the little new york office which meanwhile had been established each inquiry was painstakingly answered. Pamphlets and books were sent out. Businessmen traveling out of existing groups were referred to these prospective newcomers. New groups started up and it was found to the astonishment of everyone that AA's message could be transmitted in the mail as well as by word of mouth. By the end of 1939, the estimated that it was estimated that 800 alcoholics were on their way to recovery. In the spring of 1940, uh, John D. Rockefeller gave a dinner for many of his friends to which he invited AA members to tell their stories. He also popped the bill for our first publication. Okay. We had people helping us, but we learned from that. That would be the last time that somebody outside of AA 
would actually be able to donate. Because after that, um, if you're not an AA member, you're not allowed to put money in the basket. No. You cannot will your money to AA. You're no longer an AA member. You're dead. They won't take it. Okay? News of this got on the worldwide uh, wires. Inquiries poured in again, and many people went to the bookstores to get the book Alcoholics Anonymous. The original name of the book was called A Way Out, but they changed it because there were 13 other ways out already. <laughs> by, 19, by March 1941, the membership had shot up to 2,000. Okay. And they did that. They, they, they barely even had telephones yet. Okay. The mushering process was in full swing. AA had become a national institution. Our society then entered a fearsome and exciting adolescent period. The test that it faced was this. Could large numbers of erstwhile erratic alcoholics successfully meet and work together? Would there be quarrels over membership, leadership, and money? Would there be strivings for power and prestige? Would there be schisms, which would split AA apart? Soon AA was beset by these very problems on every side in every group. But out of this frightening and first disrupting experience, the conviction grew that AAs had to hang together or die separately. We had to unify our fellowship or pass off the scene, which is where we're going to bring in the traditions now. As we discovered the principle by which the individual alcoholic could live, so we had to evolve principles by which the AA group and AA as a whole could survive and function effectively. And what they're saying is, we need to grow as groups too. As an AA group, you need to be growing, not necessarily in numbers, but as a group, you need to be growing up together. Okay. Um, it was thought that no alcoholic man or woman could be excluded from our society, that our leaders might serve but never govern, that each group was to be autonomous, and that there was no be no professional class of therapy. Like we, no, right here. There were to be no fee, fees or dues. Our expenses were to be met on our own voluntary contributions. There was to be the least possible organization, even in our service centers. Our public relations were to be based upon attraction rather than promotion. It was decided that all members ought to be anonymous at the level of press, radio, TV, and films. And in no circumstances should we give endorsements, make alliance, or enter public controversies. This was the substance of AA's 12 traditions, which are stated in full on page 561 of this book. Though none of these principles had the force of rules or laws, they had become so widely accepted by 1950 that they were confirmed by our first international conference held at Cleveland. Today, the remarkable unity of AA is one of the greatest assets that our society has. Now you know why you love your group so much, right? It works, man. It works. While the internal difficulties of our adolescent period grew, were being ironed out, public acceptance of AA grew by leaps and bounds. For, for this, there were two principal reasons, the large number of recoveries and reunited homes. These made an impression everywhere of alcoholics who came to AA and really tried. 50% got sober at once and remained that way. 25% sobered up after some relapses. And among the remainder, those who stayed on with AA showed improvement. Other thousands came to AA, a few AA meetings and at first decided they didn't want the program. Great, but great numbers of these, about two or threes, began to return as time passed. So we understood that planting a seed worked, that these people might come back, that we must not be mean, we must not be rude, we must not hate alcohol, or they're not going to come back. Another reason for the wide acceptance of AA was the ministration of friends, friends in medicine, religion, and press, together with innumerable others who became our able and persistent advocates. Without such support, AA could have only made the slowest progress. 
Some of the recommendations of AA's early medical and religious friends will be found further on in this book. Alcoholics Anonymous is not a religious organization. Neither does it take any particular medical point of view. Though we cooperate widely with the men of medicine as well as the men of religion, that we're not closed-minded, okay? But you get to choose your own. And we'll, we're going to get into that. Alcohol, being no respecter of persons, we are in an accurate, we are an accurate cross-section of America. And in distant lands, the same democratic evening process is now going on. By personal religious affiliations, we include Catholics, Protestants, Jews, Hindus, and a sprinkling of Muslims and Buddhists. More than 15% of us are women. That, I'm telling you right now, the women are taking over right now. It's the emotional sobriety. At present, our, par our membership is pyramiding at a rate of about 25% a year. So far, upon the total problem of several million actual and potential alcoholics uh, in the world, we have made only a scratch. In all probability, we shall never be able to touch more than a fair fraction of the alcoholic problem in all of its ramifications. Upon therapy for the alcoholic himself, we surely have no monopoly. In other words, they're saying there are other paths to recovery. Yet it is our great hope that all those who have found, have as yet found no answer, may begin to find one in the pages of this book and will presently join us on the high road to a new freedom. All right. So the forward to the third and fourth edition are a lot shorter. <laughs> But good for us. We got through that that forward to the second edition. We know more now, though, don't we? We do. Will we be able to apply it in our program? Yeah. Yeah. See, once you've recovered, knowledge is power again. Because it's God's will. <laughs> so it works out for us. All right. We're getting close to, we're at 45 minutes here, so I'm going to go ahead and get on this, um, because now we have some fun stuff that we're going to talk about. Forward to the third edition. By March 1976, I was six years old, when this edition went into the printer, the total worldwide, and my dad would have been six years sober. All right. Membership of Alcoholics Anonymous was conservatively estimated at more than one million. One million groups with almost, oh, I'm sorry. No, that's the membership with 20, 28,000 groups meeting in over 90 countries. Wow. 26 years. Yeah. But wow. Surveys of groups in the United States, Canada indicate that AA is reaching out not only to more and more people, but to a wider and wider range. Women now make up one-fourth of the membership. Among newer members, the proportion is nearly one-third. 7% of the AA surveyed are less than 30 years of age, among them many in their teens. 1970s, okay? Those people that got sober are now celebrating like 50 years of sobriety. Actually, more than that. The basic principle of the AA program, it appears, hold good for the individual of many different lifestyles, just as the program has brought recovery to those many different nationalities. The 12 steps that summarize the program may be called Los Dos Pesos in one country or Los Dos Etapes in another. I know I screwed up. I don't. I know my Spanish better than my French. So, but they trace exactly the same path of recovery that was placed by the earliest members of Alcoholics Anonymous. In spite of the great increase in the size and the span of this fellowship, at its core remains a simple and person. At its core, it remains simple and personal. Each day, somewhere in the world, recovery begins when one alcoholic talks to another alcoholic, sharing experience, strength, and hope. Underline that. Each day, somewhere in the world, recovery begins. Underline that. And then under that, you're going to put not meetings. Oops. Oh, everything just went. Um, not meetings. Nope. 12-step calls. 12-step calls. 
A lot of people don't know what 12-step call is anymore. We will cover those at one point. Let's do the four to the fourth edition. This fourth edition of Alcoholics Anonymous came off the press in November 2001. I remember that. <laughs> I was three years sober. Since the third edition was published in 1976, worldwide membership of AA has just about doubled. To an estimated 2 million or more with nearly 100,800 groups meeting in approximately 150 countries around the world. Literature has played a major role in AA's growth and a striking phenomena of the past quarter century has been an explosion of translation of our basic literature into many languages and dialects. Do you know how hard it is to do that? A lot of companies will not even put contracts into Spanish because the language changes changes the situation. So that is very difficult to do. So that the fact that it could be done is nothing short of another miracle of God saying, yeah, you're doing the right thing. In country after country where the AA seed was planted it has taken root slowly at first then growing by leaps and bounds when literature has become available. Currently, Alcoholics Anonymous has been translated into 43 languages. Wow. As the message of recovery has reached a large number of people, it has also touched the lives of vastly greater variety of suffering alcoholics. When the phrase, we are people would not normally mix, page 17 of this book, was written in 1939, it referred to a fellowship composed largely of men and few women with quite similar social, ethnic, and economic backgrounds. Like so much of the AA's basic text, those words had proved to be far more visionary than the founding members could have ever imagined. The stories added to this edition represent a membership whose characteristics of age, gender, race, and culture have widened and deepened to encompass virtually everyone the first hundred members could have hoped to reach. What a phenomenon. And now, AA is the largest organization in the world. It is also the largest organization in the world that no one wanted to be a part of. Weird. None of us wanted to be alcoholic. We didn't choose this. We were born this way. And I'll cover that here in the doctor's opinion. On the, in the in the next series, okay? Now, I want you to listen to this last part, okay? Because we've been predicting things for a long time. I want you to know, I've been going to AA online since the early 90s, okay? All right. While our literature has, it came out in 2001. No, I was 11 years sober when it came out. Don't trust me on my dates. Don't trust me. While our literature has, has preserved the integrity of the AA literature, sweeping changes in society as a whole are reflected in new customs and practices within the fellowship. Okay. AA is a, we, we, AA does so much more than, than we know and or think. Even though we have no uh, say so on outside issues, we influence outside issues all the time. As a person living a new life, you can make an effect in your own community. I know this. I'm doing it. It could be tough. They won't listen to you. You got to build some trust. But anyway, taking advantage of technological advances, for example. AA members with computers can participate in meetings online, sharing with fellow alcoholics across the country, around the world. In any meeting, anywhere, AA shared Share experience, strength, and hope with each other in order to stay sober and help other alcoholics. Modem to modem or face to face, AA speak the language of, of, of the heart in all its power and simplicity. Now, the in any meeting, anywhere, I want you to underline that whole paragraph. And at the bottom, we're going to put no dumping or whining in meetings, okay? No, that is for your sponsor. 
And if you're dumping or whining in a meeting, it probably means you don't have a sponsor. Okay. We don't do check-ins. This isn't celebrate recovery. Okay. Great program. So don't get me wrong. But AA is more structured. Okay. So today what we got to learn was the process of AA and how it kind of came about. You can see as one alcoholic works with another alcoholic that something is quite different. That something is quite different. We also found out a few things. That 100 people wrote the big book. That AA wasn't invented. It was a gift from God. It was a gift from your higher power. See, your higher power knew 80-something years ago that you would need this. You were born. You were born special. Not bad special. Okay? But good. You were chosen to do this. Or you wouldn't be here right now. And that is fact. That is fact. So... If you are new to the program, what I want to say is, welcome home. And to anybody that is trying this program, you already have my respect. You already have it. So put those blinders on. Don't worry about the rest of the world right now. Put your blinders on. And do what you need to do to heal. Because one way or another, you're going to deal with this, whether you decide whether you want to do it or whether it comes out in trauma. But one way or another, you're going to deal with the snakes inside of you. So why not do it yourself with the help of God and the people in AA? All right. Thank you all. Um, I certainly hope this is helping. Uh, thank you to all my listeners and anybody else that joins in. I love you. I love you. I don't even know you. I don't need to know you. But I do. See, because of the work that I do, I get these dividends. And these dividends come in the, in the source of love. And therefore, I have all this extra love to give away. And that's how I can love you without knowing you. Peace out. And have a day. Bye-bye.